The idea in my head of what a research period should look like often stopped me from actually spending time with the materials and thinking I was interested in. I imagined where I would be. I took up a studio space for a couple of months. I imagined this perfect place to embed myself in research. But life constantly pushed up against this idea and changed the shape of what my research period looked like. Actually, I think it just revealed the shape it was, is, and was always meant to be. My intention for this period of research was towards new writing, as more and more my relationship to language was about becoming illegible within the English language. To refuse clarity is something that has been driving my work, rhythm driving writing. For some reason, I felt like to get to that point of writing creatively, I needed a period of serious or formal research. Formal as in academic. Academic to get to the embodied. It didn't quite make sense and it didn't work. And I'm grateful for that discovery. My research began with this statement. My research explores rhythm, its relationship to the layering of time, memory, poetic knowledge production and dissemination. I'm exploring the legacy of rhythm in the context of the Caribbean and its diaspora as a coded creative tool for survival, social protest and futurity across artist practices and navigating our contemporary lives, imbued by a rumbling of ancestral knowledge, the known unknowns. How do these notions become pedagogical praxis in their own right? I'm thinking about contemporary artists as well as the legacies of Calypso, Carnival, sound systems, dub poetry, independent publishing, pirate radio. How are these manifestations of Caribbean culture rooted in anti-imperialist, anti-colonialist and anti-capitalist sentiments, subverting, refusing the surveillance of over-policing of black and minority communities in the UK and globally through imaginative approaches to futurity. Intrinsic to this research is an exploration of seas and oceans the relationships to rhythm, waves, movement, migration, and the shared qualities of the sonic as rhizomatic and generative. As a means of reflecting on my dual Caribbean and South Asian heritage, I'm also interested in the layered nature of time, critically engaging with their entangled colonial histories and solidarities formed later in Britain and what has come of the relationships since. My statement was long, wordy, ambitious, exciting, but unrealistic. I felt an uncomfortable pressure to be looking for something, finding something. Instead, I decided to listen and to try and attune to frequencies other than my own. I think the place I'm at now, through some kind of porous, sticky means, has brought me to understanding what research means to me in this moment, this doing word. The doing this made me feel intense guilt every time I look at the stack of books piling up and the tabs open but unread because my body says now's not the right time. This is not how I imagined undertaking a period of research. Why does it feel like that awful question amongst networked peers? What are you working on right now? I felt the weight of expectation to uncover something and simultaneously felt uncomfortable by it. I wanted the research to speak to me, to speak with it, or let it speak through me. I try to remove the doing this from research, a verb, a word that characterizes a mode of being. I think now I can understand research as a mode of being. In and amongst that mode of being are other duties that imbue my day to day. Over the past two years, those have mostly consisted of primary care for my great uncle, and numerous hospital trips with my granddad throughout lockdowns. I feel sticky, but positively so, but maybe it's the exhaustion. Like one of those sticky, stretchy toys that splat against a window and slowly roll down or stretch and keep stretching. So as a result, I've been practicing methods of honoring knowledge production and dissemination formed on unstable ground. Personal narratives, memories, relationships, conversations, food as point of knowledge production, but more recently as channels. In a conversation in the 39th issue of The Funambulist between Alexis Pauline Gums and Christina Sharp, Alexis says, your letters guided me to think of this as being a channel. 
an opening for messages, for refusals, for accountable possibilities that honor our drowned. The question for me is how to keep the channel open with all this salt. Now, I think this stretching could be channels opening, channels closing, a breath channel, a grief channel, sonic channels, channels of water, channels carrying channels, carrying channels, channels of mourning, joy, risk, life, death, channels for coexistence, for new experiments, crossing channels as crossing frequencies between pirate radio stations, through WhatsApp video calls with family, where for minutes or hours, our channels connect, life lost in the channel, in the seas. Since January 2020, I've attended six funerals, one in person and five on Zoom or streamed on YouTube, three in India, one in Australia and one in the UK. Four of which I share with my great uncle. I bring my laptop to his flat and we watch funerals together more frequently in 2021 than I'd like. Hard of hearing, I have to narrate what is happening. And this is very odd. I see myself outside my body. In 2020, I travel with him by ambulance to hospital. I cook, I give him new medication, work on his rehabilitation, hand the council to make his home safer and more accessible, organize food parcels, we talk about soaring gas prices, raised rent, English people, factory work, asthma, the labor that links to his physical health. In July, 2021, I visit the George Padmore Institute. A press release from People's War Sound Systems archive chips away at the salt and opened a portal in the pandemic. It read, throughout the term of the conservative government, they've used slogans to win over support. They started in the 1980s with a return to Victorian values. And it was in effect a return to Victorian times for Britain with increasing poverty. The 1990s buzzword was back to basics. Single mothers, travelers, the unemployed, disabled people, people who claim benefits, homeless people and pensioners singled out for a media blitz of blame for the problems of the country. People's War Carnival Band is proud to present its theme for our costumes for Notting Hill Carnival 1994, called Back to Basics Britain. Costume sections, hardcore representing the disillusioned youth, virtual reality representing the rapid technological advances of Britain, cameras everywhere surveilling the young. Scandal represents the hypocrisy of back to basics Britain morality. Fuel for recession, the imposition of VAT on the price of fuel, resulting in great human suffering for people on low incomes and the elderly, and throwing away the family jewels. This costume shows privatization gone mad. Salty Tory buildup in our channel. People's war chipping away, as we're still chipping away. Through the funerals and care duties, I learned much of the struggles and anti-imperialist efforts from both sides of my family, through the everyday, through the under the counter, through the back door, the channels that layer on top of, between, around and through the institu institutional architecture we navigate. They speak then and now and at another present point in which we'll meet again. There's been a natural pull to water for me in the past few years. When the city climbs high above the skies, thinking of water reminds me of elsewhere, the elsewhere and somewhere my atoms might have been. My uncle and my granddad tell me numerous times how my uncle almost died during his journey from India to the UK by ship. Seasickness made him so unwell he was given his last rites. But it's not till September 2021, when I'm going to Naples, where I'm now living, that he tells me the ship in 1962, docked in Naples as well. His memory of that place was vivid and my decision to move feels even more meaningful than before. I sit on the terrace and watch boats go by and realize how time overlays. 
that I am here and they were here in 1962, passing these same seas, docking at the port. I can see them. I see the ship. I smell the sea, the salt. It tastes different this time. I begin exploring archiving through water, what it means, how it looks, interested in what it simultaneously holds and also removes. It preserves and at the same time it dissolves. To, to dissolve is not to disappear, it's to change shape, change its mode of being. My research continues to change its mode of being. In a passage of writing, Alexis Pauling Gum says, the experience of embodiment of water, how partially submerged in water, my body remembers it's non-linear, existing as it does in multiple worlds. I read about poem maps, that sailors memorize poem maps to help them navigate the seas. And I think I'm trying to make my own poem maps, breaking free from the bonds of time and sinking with the chaos, a single water, a continuum of discontinuities, Water remembers the dead. Poem maps become a method of encountering a past that is not a past. One so poem map I rediscovered recently after visiting Alvaro Barrington's work in July last year. This poem map reads, what is this soft but hard space? Its musicality echoes through the crumbling crusty cement lyrics that dance and swirl in shape and color. Holding life, holding space, tunnel vision, delicately hanging in the balance of what you believe it to be and what you believe you see. What do you hear? Feel my words as you hear and see the weight of them. I become weightless when I let them go, set them free, sets me free. What do you make of this concrete space, invisible but ever present? Let's clean up this town. Whose hands, whose labor? Who's clean and who cleans? Waves, sonic waves. Protect them but set them free. Agency to reverberate elsewhere. We're all messy. Organised chaos. In a listening workshop with Shanice Aretha, led by Evan Ifekoya, we hum together, finding our tune, connecting and disconnecting our breaths. We breathe like coral, finding our home frequency, in this surrendering to sound, stillness becomes an expanse to attune to or be invited into. A portal, a channel, but it didn't lead anywhere. Rather, it moved us in waves, allowed us to listen in wa waves of feeling. In June, I visited Liverpool for a research trip. The docks feel so haunting that I constantly pay respect to those who have passed through, ancestors who passed through. As I write, a passage of God's mountain keeps coming to me. It reads, when you get homesick, it's not something missing, it's something present. Remember to greet every absence and welcome it in. When you start to think of me, it will mean that I'm with you. I can feel the ghosts. I can hear them too, and we exchange. What is the weight of these docks? There's a historical presence here in this repurposing of space, a heavy, ever-present history interwoven into the fabric of every day, easy to miss as by design, but difficult not to feel. In the Lewis building, there's a work by Lamin Fofana, Life and Death by Water, a large scale multi-sensory sound installation, taking inspiration from W.E.B. Du Bois' Dark Water Voices from Within the Veil and M. Norbizi Phillips' Song, a piece of work and thinking that's been sacred to me. Zong the ship was owned by Liverpool merchants and Fofana's installation keeps me stuck. The sonic connects with my body and a new channel opens to recalibrate and revoice those ghosts I sat with on the docks.
chorus, circular but never the same, a method of encountering a past that is not a past. In October 2021, I take a course entitled Rhythm, Race and Revolution. Aditi asks us, what are your resistance stories? I say, in the lives of the people around me, my family and friends. I think about lineage as opposed to origin. Listen to movement because that's all I've known. It's all we've all known. And maybe if we listen to it, we'll glide along unstable ground. We've all had to be creative to survive here. I've been enjoying creating my own archive out of unauthorized claims. I think I'm doing this to better understand where I'm situated, what makes the parts of this body, which connects with other bodies and how to pass meaning to and between one another that shapes the way we move through the world, with the world, with intentionality. Writing in circles to remember, a meditation, a poem map, I can't find the words or energy to write coherently, to write an essay, but I'm constantly questioning what that means, what writing is meant to look, sound and feel like. In honoring my slowness, I think this realization and reflection of over a year is step one. The books I bought and watch accumulate, living with them is was part of step one. Knowing they're there with me, for me to take care of, for them to speak to me eventually is step one. Step two, which I may reach in 2022, is opening some pages. Digesting each year slowly, going through my body, spilling out in different ways, a slow digestion, a creation of my own time. Counting in years in a Gregorian calendar doesn't really make sense for this this notion of each year starting and ending, something to gain, a conclusion to gain, in this case from research. The conclusion is there are no conclusions, only channels, and I'll keep working through the soul. Channels stay open with the soul. Channels are blocked with the soul. They preserve. I realize the salt can be put atop limes, on a windowsill, in an old Nescafe jar, and make something anew.